Can you hear me now? Okay. For some reason, one of my scenes doesn't work with my microphone, and I can't figure out why. But hey, we're good. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. <laughs> yeah, camera overheats. We'll we'll see what happens. I So for those who don't know and haven't seen, my camera is prone to overheating, and I attempted to fix it. We'll see how long this lasts. I made backups just in case, but we'll, we'll see what happens. How are you all doing today on this Thursday afternoon, evening, wherever you are? Would it be morning for anyone? Australia? Yeah, it'd be like really early in Australia. Um, yeah, ice. I, I don't want to put ice on this camera. I'm, it sounds scary. Thanks for following. Um, but eh, we'll see good, what happens. Um, yeah, fancy camera for the five minutes it works. We'll we'll find out. Maybe I'll just get one of those ice vests and I'll just put it on my camera whenever I stream. That should work, right? 9 p.m. in Egypt. Wow, it's bedtime. 9 p.m. in London, too. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I did a I did a talk for a group in Ghana like an hour ago, and I think it was like 7 p.m. for them, and they're a tiny bit uh, west of GMT, so that makes sense. Wow. Okay, you like this typeface? Which typeface? This one? This one? I love it too. It's called Mono Lisa. It's pretty good. It it costs a pretty penny, but I like it. Um, maybe I could see if they'll like give us some for viewers of stuff. Is this a webcam? This is not a webcam. This is a Sony A6100. I like it. It's fun, but for some reason it overheats sometimes and I haven't been able to figure out how to make it stop. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, but yeah, normal, I, I do have a backup camera. And so it, if at some point I just, you know, go dark, I'll switch to the crappy camera and then you'll just see me like looking all messed up. Not really. Am I using a dummy battery? Yeah, I have it actually plugged into the wall. So like the, it's not the battery that's causing it to overheat. And I checked and, and it shouldn't be the screen or any, the screen. I have the screen like set away from the camera. I have it in like a very empty spot. Uh, but yeah, it, it, so far it hasn't overheated on this yet. So we'll see. Oh, hey, it's that lady with the funny videos on Twitter. Thanks. I actually just made one for Netlify like 20 minutes ago and that's going to go live. I think we have it buffered for 2.30 are my time so in two hours that'll go live we'll see how it goes i'm just glad that they let me take over their twitter with the with the buffs yeah twitter you mean tiktok they're tiktoks but they go on twitter i'm not really a like youth enough for for tiktok i go on there and i'm just like ooh, i'm one of the oldest people on this app twitch talks yeah that's a good way to put it when i um there was a point where I was scrolling in the feed and I keep telling people this story because it really was devastating. There was a point where I was scrolling in the feed and it said, if you were born before 2004, keep scrolling. And my heart, before 2004. And and I watched the video anyway and it was just like some Disney thing or something, but it, it, it made me sad. But yeah, I am not, yeah, 2004, it hurt. Uh, did I do the dentist pun earlier? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, made me feel ancient, and then I kept watching TikToks and attempted to, like, renegade and stuff. That's, just, that's all I've got. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad that I'm not the only ones. We are the elderly of the internet, and we are proud. Woo! Um... So yeah, anyway, I was thinking I'd work on our Pokemon game that we started. The Eldernet. Ooh, I like that. I feel like we could have some lore then. Um, so last time, well, last week we had the React Core team on. Clara, hello! Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, Clara right there, she's uh, Clara X Trash. She's a friend of mine from Spain. We used to live by each other in Cáceres. And she's awesome. She's a ta talented artist. And so if you ever want to get some cool art, she is great. Um, anyway, uh, last week, one week ago, we had the React Core team on and they were talking about things, um, just new stuff coming in React. They said that they might be rewriting React in Rust. 
maybe someday. The, when I asked them about it, literally everybody just smiled and they were silent. So I had no idea what that meant. And then they were like, maybe someday, mysteriously. And that was that. But, uh, yeah, Rust Act. <laughs> um, but then two weeks ago, uh, I started, This was that was like my first attempt at doing a more legit type of streaming thing. And we started making a next application that was a Pokemon guessing game where you could start the game and start typing Pokemon. And it was just the first 151 Pokemon. And if you typed all of them, you got points. And then whenever you messed up, you got negative points. That was it. I haven't added a timer or any pretty styling or anything. So I figured we'd work on that today. I haven't, I've, oh my gosh, Kiwi and Inma, hello, say hello to them. Oh, I miss Spain. I was supposed to be getting on a plane to Spain this weekend and then the pandemic. I'm so sad. Like, uh, I, I was supposed to be speaking at a JS camp in Barcelona next week, um, and I was gonna travel around a bit, but what can you do? I'll go back someday. I hope you all are staying healthy. I'm kind of nervous with all these US spikes of, of cases and everything, and I'm just staying as indoor as possible. To see the rain on the plains? I'm not sure what that's a reference to, but... I like it. Barcelona is awesome. Yeah, it's so pretty. I just, I miss the food. Whenever I've gone to Spain, I end up like bringing back vats of olive oil so that way I can have real olive oil whenever I get home. Oh, rains in the plains in Spain. Yeah. Do a Fortnite game for warm up. Ooh, that would be fun. But I actually, I haven't set up my stream setup for Fortnite. Maybe next time I could do like an ask me anything while I play Fortnite and we could just like talk about react while you watch me die. That would be pretty funny. Oh, hey, Samantha. Um, so let's get, let's get coding. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody want to talk about anything before we code? Code is cool. Eh, we can keep talking while we code. So I'm going to switch over. I have like buttons now so I can have my screen going. Whoa, look at that. Okay. So, uh, here we go. We talk about, oh, you want to, we want to yeah, ask me about keyboards. Uh, this camera it, for those asking is an a6100, a Sony a6100. It is fun, but it sometimes overheats. So we'll see how long this lasts, but look at this. I can put my hand there. Focus on the hand. Come back to me. Focus on the hand. Come back to me. Isn't that so cool? That's the only reason why I got this camera. I just thought that'd be so cool. Hi, Adrian. Um, and yeah, I have a stream deck going. Um, Okay, so coding things. Again, I haven't actually looked at this since since we did it last time. So this is just going to be a thing. My keyboard overheats? No, my camera does. But it hasn't yet, so don't jinx me. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so the way the game works so far is you click start game and you start typing Pokemon like Pikachu and Ditto and... I don't know, Squirtle. And then if you click give up, it tells you your score. So we typed three, so we get a score of three. If I type again and type poop, and then I click give up, I have a score of negative one because I didn't type a real Pokemon. So it's very, very basic, but we have something going. And what I'd like to do is clean this up so it seems more like a real game. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how we'll do it, but but I'll, I'll walk you through the code a little bit because we did this all in the last stream and we got to kind of do this. How many keyboards do I own? Many. Uh, many. I, I'm typing on a quiet one this time, but I've got some nice loud ones. I've got some quieter ones. I love my keyboards, but I probably have too many. <laughs> Let me put these back. I definitely, so I was looking at drop.com yesterday and they added a bunch of colored metal cases and I love them. And I realized if I wanted to get them, which I do, I might have to either get rid of some of my own boards or just get a lot more boards. And so I'm kind of figuring it out. My favorite keyboard size is probably a 60% keyboard, but I don't actually, I only have one of those right now. Um, I have two of those right now. One of them is wah, wah, knocking over everything as I show you. One of them is this Rama board right here. Check that out. 
DSS tech led designed by yours truly. Um, and I really like this one. This one is nice and nice and heavy. So the sizes are like, this is becoming a keyboard conversation. You know what? I'm just going to switch so that way you can uh, see things. What am I doing? I'm about to click that. There it is. Hello. So because we're not looking at the code right now. So normally a keyboard, I don't have a full, a 100% keyboard is one that is a full keyboard that has a numpad and everything. A 96% keyboard is one of these where it still has a numpad and everything, but everything's kind of squished. So uh, if you'll notice right here, like it doesn't have the extra keys in there. Everything is kind of squished together. So that, that's a 96% keyboard. Then a 87 to 75% keyboard is a TKL. And that's this kind of keyboard. And yeah, it, it still has the arrow keys and everything, but it doesn't have a numpad. And then, uh, let's see, my arms are getting tired. Um, one second, you're going to see the mess behind me and focus for just a second while I get another one. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a 68% keyboard. 68% keyboard is one that still has arrow keys, still has some function keys, but it's less. So it's, it's a little bit smaller than the other ones. Um, then below a 68%, sometimes 67%, eh, um, is a 60%. And that one doesn't have arrow keys, and so you have to program it. So I have this function key right here, and then I also mapped caps lock to function. And then you have the HKJL right here. Um, I also have another 60% board. Well, this one, this one is actually a 3D printed case. And then I laser cut the plate underneath it. This one's a pretty fun one as well. I'm a big fan of these ones. The HKJL keys with arrows, those are the arrows in Vim, HKJL. And so that's, that's what I do with that one. And then, um, then there's a 40% keyboard where it's even less. And this one, it's, it's a plank, so it's actually an orthogonal layout. And this is a 40% keyboard. Yeah. And I have a variety of switches on all of these. These are some loud box jades. On this one, I've got some uh, 67G Zelios. I love these switches. Um, on this one, I have some box whites. I kind of grunted, this one's a heavy board. Some box whites, these are clicky. The ones that I'm actually typing on in this stream are Topre switches. They're very quiet. Um, they're, they're silenced ones. Um, and then I have, I mostly use tactile switches, but this one right here is my only linear board. It's got Telios on it. I did a grab bag of switches and ended up with Telios, and so I put it on this one. But yeah, keyboards are fun. Um, I, for asking about Scrabble, I don't have, I don't have a Scrabble board on me right now. I want to build one and I have like the drawings, but I have to actually like laser cut it and, and make it happen. So I haven't, I haven't done that part yet. Excuse me while I put all of these keyboards away. Just do that there and clean it up later. Um, is that the Rama hot swap? Yes, that one is. Um, the one that I'm typing on right now, it is a TKL. So the 87% one, I can try to lift it. Uh, uh, there it is. It's a, oh my gosh, you can kind of see it. I'm trying. It's, um, it's a, uh, this one has a long name. It's a real force round two, uh, TKL with 55 G silenced Topre switches. So that's what that one is. I kind of rotate every day. Yeah. It is not a Norba Force. I did, chose not to spend $600 on a case because as beautiful as those cases are, I, I can't spend that much money on a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I need, I, I, so I have a laser cut stand next to me. I'd love to have like a Lazy Susan or something of my spinning boards that I can kind of grab onto on any given day, but yeah. Let's see, I heard you have a meetup about keyboards there in your city. How does it work? Well. Normally, we would actually be having it this weekend. Again, sadness, so many things were going to happen this weekend. Um, and uh, we rent out a space. Normally, it would be the Living Computer Museum, which another sad thing that announced that it's closed indefinitely, if not permanently, this past week. Ah, um, 
but there or or um one of the universities in Seattle and we just say come and bring your keyboards and so we'll have talks about keyboards some people will talk about QMK firmware um some people will talk about stenography some people will just talk about the basics of mechanical keyboards and then we'll have between 300 and 400 people come and you could just play on all the keyboards and it's awesome um how advanced is the programming here um you are very welcome here. Is this the right place for me? It is. And I'm going to switch back to coding. So now that you've gotten me very distracted talking about keyboards, because I will end up making this a keyboard stream, we're going back to talking about coding. So we are going to get to this. So anyway, we have this game. If I were to say some not Pokemon name and then give up, our score would be negative one. Otherwise, if I were to do Mr. Mime, and then give up, I, our score is one. So whenever you type a, po a valid Pokemon name, we get a score, otherwise if we don't, it's a negative score. Um, last time I set this up with my uh, next starter project. If you are interested in looking it up, you can go to my GitHub, which if you didn't know, the README thing is a thing now, or you can make a README for your profile, which is kind of fun. Um, and with the next Netlify starter, I made a few starters, but this one is just a very, very basic MBK. Yeah, I, I make viral Twitter things. I am a fool on the internet. Um, so anyway, this is this is that the starter project here. And then once you make that starter project, this is what we built. And we, we kind of brainstormed this together a couple weeks ago, and it was not planned. And this stream wasn't planned either, hence why I got distracted by the keyboard talk. So we have our game. Our game has an initial state where the game is not started, and it has three states that we set up where it's not started, in progress, and finished. The score is zero, and then the current Pokemon is empty. Um, then I set up a reducer, which might have seemed like overkill, but you know what? It got the job done. Where when the game is started, it sets the game state to started. When it's ended, set the game start to ended. and. Anyway, we did all of that, and then whenever you type a Pokemon, stuff happens, and then you can submit a Pokemon, and it changes the score when you submit the Pokemon. Then uh, we have our header. Our header is just a very basic component that takes in text. So our header is get type and loser. We're going shopping. And when you click on the start game button, it dispatches the start game state. Um, why don't you use TypeScript with Re React? Any reasons? Because I like myself. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I I think TypeScript is great for a lot of teams, but for a lot of smaller projects, I think it is overkill, personally. So I don't use TypeScript if I can avoid it. I probably don't have a popular opinion there, but I'm sticking to it. Um, gosh darn it. Okay. <laughs> Some people have opinions about TypeScript. Okay, so anyway, uh, when the game state is started, then we have this input that shows up and the input um, when you change things. I remember this was a very funky thing for changing the game state and stuff. And you know what? I don't want to remember how we did it. If you want to look it up, you can look at um, previous videos, but I'm just going to say it works because it does. And I'll get back into this later. But basically, you can type out Pokemon. Oh, I remember how this works. Dang it. Okay, I'll explain it to you. When you type out a Pokemon, that is what populates this input because it's a controlled component. And you type things, and that's when you're typing a Pokemon. But then when you submit it, it's a separate state. And I wanted to make it a controlled component on the off chance that we do something fun with it. Otherwise, it could have been uncontrolled. So that's why. It works because it does, correct. Ha ha ha. Um, and then when you click give up, that ends the game. I probably should have a more like fun thing, like don't give up, say I'm done. Look at me, I'm so positive. It's done. Okay, and then when the game is finished, it shows the score. Um, so today, I assume we're just gonna kind of keep making this until it's beautiful. Um, why Netlify instead of Zite? Well, first of all, I work at Netlify, so I'm very biased. Um, I like that, uh, well, also Zite changed their name because they were going to be sued. Fun fact, that's why they changed their name, but I'm not allowed to talk too much about it. Well, I never signed an NDA, but they're Vercel now. Um, I personally like Netlify more, not just because I work there and they pay the bills, but because there's a lot of other extra features with Netlify that 
you can get without having to do any extra things. So for example, um, there's build plugins. If you wanted to, for example, run pages through an accessibility thing, you click an install thing and it automatically is added to your project. If you wanted to add a domain, it's built right into Netlify. I think Vercel has that as well, though. Um, you can have different team members and stuff. If I were to go into this one, this is actually a demo I'm working on. Don't look too closely for uh, for identity. Um, you can make it so people can, oh, don't look at emails. I just totally doxed myself. It's fine. Anyway, um, you, can, you can make people log in and register and set up authentication on your website. Um, and when you set up authentication on your website, you don't have to set up a backend if you use Netlify. Um, there's also Netlify functions, which lets you basically do AWS Lambda without having to deal with AWS, which was the biggest selling point for me. Um, and they also have forms, so you don't have to actually, you can just add the data attribute Netlify to your HTML forms, and then you don't have to set up a backend to get results. Um, you can do like large media stuff so it can it can handle large asset files for you. It does A B testing for you. It has analytics built in, blah blah blah. Anyway, there's a lot of extra things that you can do with Netlify because ultimately both products kind of do the same thing. But what I like about Netlify is it lets you do a few extra things. So that that is why. Um do next serverless functions work with Netlify? Yes, they do. Um, I thought you worked for Netflix. Ha ha ha. For those who don't know, I actually made a joke about this. Um, if you go to my code pen, let's see. I was just like, hey, where do I work? Netlify. Ha 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 ha. Jokes. Anyway, I work there. But anyway, they they both they both do a lot of the same thing. If you if you want to use all of the Next.js serverless and and uh, API functions, you can totally do that. There's actually a really nice package called Next on Netlify. Next on Netlify, this npm package, and it'll just convert all of your serverless stuff to a Netlify function, and so you can do all of the same stuff. Um, so yeah, you can do all of the dynamic servery things that you want while still using Netlify. But yeah, you can do things. Um, anyway, I am going to, do we ever code really? No, I don't code. I just kind of talk about coding and then eventually do things. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I like Netlify, but I can't get non-programmers to use it if I make them a site. That's that's a thing. So that's where you kind of have to just implement a CMS or something because it's so nice and easy to be able to just plop it in. And then, for example, if you make a terrible mistake, you can roll back. Actually, hmm, do you want to see a preview of something? I'm going to, this is, this is going to be our little fun thing. So, uh, one, I made a TikTok for Netlify that's going to be going live soon. Ooh, everyone wants the secret little preview. I made a TikTok for Netlify that I don't actually know how I'm going to show you this. That's my face. Um, but it's going to be going live in two hours on their Twitter, so it's not that exciting. Um, how do I do this? It's going to be that. Hello, did you know that you can instantly roll back your website in a single click? Here's how. First, make an unforgivable mistake, then deploy it, then realize what you've done, then find your old commit, hit publish, it's done. Anyway, that's the TikTok I made for Netlify that's going up in like an hour. Ha 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 ha. Uh, is this the Night Owl theme? It is not. Uh, <laughs> thanks, friends. Uh, retweet me. Um, th that's literally my job security. They're just like, wow, people like your TikToks. You can continue to work here. And I was like, thank you. I can pay my mortgage. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, this theme is not Night Owl. It is called Hack the Box. I thought it was a funny theme sound name, and then it ended up being a cool theme. So that is what I have on my stuff. Um, curious as to you, why you'd want the end client to use Nellify. Do I work with Anonymous? Yep. I'm a hacksaw. Watch out. Um, what CMS do people use? I know a lot of people like forestry. Um, isn't that better suited for a headless CMS? Up to you. Also, some CMSs call themselves headless, but they're not. 
Make an unforgivable mistake is also known as my day job. <laughs> That's funny. Thanks for raiding, fam. That's so fun. Um, AKA life. Who is this 4chan? It's been me all along. I'm going to code now because I'm going to keep getting distracted. This font is Mono Lisa. It's a nice font. Before I used Mono Lisa, I used uh, that JetBrains Mono, and that was pretty cool too. Hello, enjoy to live. Okay, so we have this thing. We're going to do something with it. We will be coding today. How much time did I set aside for this stream before my next meeting? I should probably figure that out before getting too into it. Oh, we're almost done. Just kidding. I have time. Um, so, uh, what do we want to do? Should we work on, I'm going to, I'm just going to ask you, do you want to work on styling this first? Would you like to add some kind of fun Pokemon API things? Would you like me to add a timer? What sort of things should we add to this game? Uh, any preferences? Because we're, we're going to do one thing at a time. I, I, we might have to just come back to this another, another time. API, timers, APIs and timers. Oh no, I need to make some kind of poll that can show up on here. Um, APIs, yeah, so the API I'm thinking of is Pokey API. I do love Pokey API. So what I could do is make it where like as people type, if it's like a good one, then like the sprite of the Pokemon will show up on occasion. That could be kind of cool. Um, yeah, that sounds fun. Let's do that. Okay, so how will we do that? <laughs> okay, so I am going to, hmm, I'm going to start organizing the code a little bit better so that way we can do this. I might put our reducer in its own separate thing so that way I can minimize it. So I'm going to do a function use game reducer. And I'm going to put all of my reducer and state stuff into this. So I'm just gonna copy all of this jazz into this. I keep hitting command because I keep switching between PC and Mac. Okay, so we're putting all of this in here. We're, we're making it a use game reducer. And then I'm going to return inside of there, return state and dispatch that come from the reducer. And then I'll do let state and dispatch equals use game reducer. Ah, game reducer. Cute. Save. I hope it didn't break. It didn't. Eh, it didn't. Generally. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to minimize this. Why are you yelling at me? Oh, because I clicked the wrong button. That's why. That's my own fault. Okay. So now use game reducer is its own separate thing. We can export it and stuff later. Um, questions. Do we use context or Redux? Context. Redux is dead to me. Well, it shouldn't be. There's still a lot of great people working on Redux, but I will not get into my rant about Redux. Long story short, you don't need Redux anymore. You should be using the context API and use reducer for all of your global state needs. If you would like to consult my people, don't. Okay, so anyway, now that we've gotten the game reducer in, we are donezo with that. Uh, let's get the Pokey API called. What I'm going to do, um, hello Rota47, um, my setup is a PC and a camera. Um, this camera, which again, that focus, so cool, right? If only my hands weren't all like dry right now. Um, this camera is an A6100 and it hasn't overheated yet. So something I have done has been okay. Um, anyway, uh, oh, you like my plant in the back? Thanks. It's called a lipstick plant. It sometimes produces flowers and otherwise it just is kind of present. Um, there's probably a joke in there somewhere. So I'm going to go to my GitHub because I have queried the Pokey API before and why reinvent the wheel? Um, the question is, where have I queried the Pokey API before? You can look at all my private repos as I scroll all of my deep mistakes. Um, oh, intro to React with Pokemon. How about that? That seems promising. Um, 
let's see, what are we using for styling? Currently, I just am using the built-in uh, styled JSX. I'll, personally, I like CSS modules more, but we're not there yet. We're just getting sprites this time, and we can uh, set stuff up later. Um, I thought context is good for state that does not change that often. It's true. Um, you have to be discerning with context. You don't want to use it for absolutely everything, but you'll want to use it. Oh, my camera's overheating. Gosh, darn it. We just talked about this. There it goes. Okay, one second. I have a backup. Backup. Oh, sad. Oh, no. Gosh, darn it. Okay, one second. Well, it lasted a good amount of time. Lasted longer than before. I'll figure out what the heck is happening. Um, why did my screen backup not work? Oh, I just didn't map it correctly. Okay. What a bummer. Hang on one second. I'm going to turn it off so that way you can try to cool down. I don't know why my camera is overheating. It is such a shame. And now you can see like my trash back here. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, we're back. Yeah, less cooler focus. Now you can't see all of my pores. Didn't you want that? We're back to Pokemon. We're going to be querying the Poke API. Look at that. Do we have it in here? We do. Heck yeah, we do. Okay, I'm just going to copy this API call so that way I don't have to do it again. Let's see. Oh, wait, I had this whole use Pokemon. Eh, yeah. YOLO. I'll clean it up. Okay. So we have use effect imported already, so we can pull in the API there. Um, am I co a computer programmer? Indeed I am. I compute programs and I program computes. Um, at least it works when I was showing off the keyboards. That's true. You got to see the keyboards in high def and that is what matters. Okay. So I pasted in this use effect. There's going to be lots of errors. And you know what? Actually, I made this as a separate hook, so I'm going to copy this out of here, and then let's see what it looks like, and we'll clean it up. Again, this is just kind of making things work and then making it pretty later. So we have the Poke API. It queries a Pokemon. With this use Pokemon hook, we have Pokemon and image coming out of it. Pokemon and image are these two states in here. I'm going to take out this use effect for the document title, because we don't need that. We don't need that. And so we have the API call in here. Um, we fetch stuff. We make sure that everything is cleaned up properly. And now I want to actually use this Pokemon thing inside of our game. And so what I want to do is, we might not actually use this as an extra hook. We'll see. What I want to do is make it so whenever someone submits a Pokemon, it puts up the sprite of the most recent Pokemon. Um, and so in our reducer, we have submit Pokemon and it checks if the Pokemon is a Pokemon, which by the way, currently we have a Pokemon.js that just lists all the Pokemon. I could use a Poke API, but I'm going to choose not to at this time. But right now use Pokemon is a hook, yes, but we might not be using it as a hook. All a hook is, is a function that wraps a React hook. They should be called useys because they all start with just the word use, but that's that's all a hook is. It's a glorified JavaScript function that wraps a React hook. Um, you are that person who makes GIFs. I'm very curious about how all of you people got to this stream who don't know where, what my Twitter is. It's fascinating to me. Anyway, let's use these useys. Okay, so um, right now when we use Pokemon, we have to call set Pokemon in here, set image in here. How am I using it in this project when I call use Pokemon? Use Pokemon. Oh, there it is. Oh, so I have a Pokemon. I have a Pokemon component that takes in use Pokemon. I should remember what code I write, shouldn't I? Um, and then we take in those things. Cute. Okay, that's nice. Lovely. Whatever. Okay, so. Uh, what are we doing? We are we are vamping up our, our Pokemon game. Currently, when I type, like, Pikachu or whatever, anyway, stuff happens. Ditto. You get a point because you named a Pokemon. We want to name all the Pokemon. On submit, we want to query stuff. And so, 
with this submit, what I could do is I could inside of our inside of our reducer, I could say, hey, we want to pull in the latest sprite. And then with that latest sprite, we could get the latest Pokemon to load. And so with that, it does current Pokemon is blank, but it takes an action dot Pokemon. And so what we could do is we could save the current Pokemon, because right now it sets the current Pokemon to a blank, to it, it erases current Pokemon. But as you type Pokemon, So when we hit submit Pokemon, it clears out the current Pokemon that we've listed. And so what we would want is for the effect to happen like in here, but what would be ideal is if we kept track of the previous Pokemon that was submitted. So we could, and I don't really want to do this, but what we could do is have a state for the previously submitted Pokemon. And then with that, that's the thing that we query the, the effect with. Um, wait, am I using Redux? No way, no how. I'm using Use Reducer because it's pretty. I like Use Reducer. It was a, it, at first I didn't like it, but I like it a lot more now. Um, let's see. I'm a benefiter of the algorithm. Gotta love the algorithm. How long have I been coding? Too long. I'm trying to calculate how long I've actually been coding. I think I first started coding about 15 years ago, so it has been a while. Why are there so many rubber duckies in this chat? Because they help me code. Bok, bok, bok. That's not what a duck makes. Quack. <laughs> okay. Um, so I do have a, I, yeah, I could store a list of all Pokemon that have been entered. That would be kind of cool. Okay. Good call. What if we had like a graph of all the sprites and had like a who's that Pokemon? And then as you type things in, it fills in the proper stripes. That would be cool. I don't actually know if the Pokey API can do that, but I think that would be really cool. Okay, what sprites are available in the Pokey API? Let's look at the docs. That would be really, really neat. This might end up just being like a planning stream and then we do the rest of it later, um, but I'm very into this idea. Okay, Pokemon, Poke API. Where's your sprites? We've got shapes. Shapes doesn't seem right. Hmm. By the way, if anybody knows how to use the Poke API, let me know because I'm just improving this right now. Um. Poke API sprites. This is how real developers code, people. Pokey API sprites. I could, hmm, because yeah, we, we've got like all of these different sprites and they're cute. I could use CSS to like lower the contrast or something and make it so dark that it, it, it just has a certain class on it. And then yeah, with that CSS mask, take it off once that Pokemon has been selected. That could work, yeah. CS, yes. Okay. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, so, right. Okay. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. So, if that's the case, hmm, here's the thing. Here's, here's my only hesitation and what I'm, what I'm trying to think through. I don't want to have to query the API every single time I do that. So, what if I got a I, I had a cache, I had something of all of the different sprites and then used that and displayed them rather than querying them from the API every single time the page loads to get all of them. I feel like that would be the better route to go overall, like performance wise. But then I have to deal with getting all of those things. Hmm, I don't want to make a database. <laughs> oh, um. Is there like a Pokemon sprite sheet that I could pull from? I'm sure that exists, right? This is also very fun. That would be cool if I could do that. Hmm. Even from any of the newer games too, that'd be fine. Pokemon sprite sheet. 
Query and store and redux. Nope. That's not, nope. That's not what I'm going to do. Because it, when I store it in redux, I still have to make those queries every single time. Like, and I'm not using redux. I refuse. But, uh, oh, this is a sprite sheet. Cute. Do I have it for like everything though? This is gen seven. How do I get gen one? Again, if you know about sprite sheets, please send me a link because right now I'm just going to kind of look for things because I'd like to just get a single sprite sheet of everything. Uh, I haven't used a sprite sheet in so long. This looks sketchy, but it would work. But at what cost? Hmm. Yeah, because having the one sprite sheet as a local asset would be the best performance-wise. Thanks, Roblox. This is exactly what I need, even though it's so blurry. It's so blurry. It's so blurry. Dang it. Why did it have to be a blurry thing that is not even for sale? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Help me. Pokemon Sprite Sheet 151, Gen 1, something. I don't want individual sprites, I want the sheet. This is, this is how developers work, people. Oh heck, DeviantArt saves the day. Oh, is this all of them? This doesn't feel like all of them. Is this all of them? One, two, three. Hmm. I think that's all of them. YOLO. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna open this image in a new tab. This looks about right. Uh, <laughs> oh, and there's multiple angles of each. That is great. Um, there's the one without animations. Oh, dang it. I disabled links in chat. I am a fool. I don't even know how to fix that live. I'm, I'm a fool. Uh, hmm. Could you like take out the dot com or something or spell out things? Check Discord. Nice. People are sending me on Discord. Perfect. I'll take it. By the way, if you want to join my Discord, my Patreon is patreon.com slash Cassidy. Oh, no, not that. That, that's Discord. Vcon.com. Okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> oh, beautiful. This is all I need. Okay, thank you very much, fam. I am sorry about that. But yes, a sprite sheet is a is one file that you can load, and then you can just get like the dimensions of the file to pull uh, images from, and it's a very fast way to get a lot of images at once. So I'm going to save this one and I'm going to just call this sprites and you can look on the inside of my computer because I don't actually remember where I saved this. <laughs> GitHub. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I think so. Typing game. Look at me go. I know where things are. In there? Sure. I'll just put it in there until we figure it out. Um, <laughs> for just two dollars, you can get all of this every day. It's true. Um, it's a little less chaotic on there than it is right now. Oh, one second. I'm doing a time check on myself. Great. Not late for a meeting. Perfect. Um, so anyway, uh, now that we have the sprites that exist right there, now we can access them. And when we access them, I have to do like a little thing to cut all of them. Actually, I think I've used a sprite sheet before on CodePen. Do you remember that meme of about like 50 feral hogs or whatever? I made a game for that on CodePen once. Where did it go? It's somewhere in here. This one, fight the 30 to 50 feral hogs. And so the concept of the game was to save the small kids playing in the yard from the 30 to 50 feral hogs. 
So you click the shed to start, and then you have to kill all the hogs as fast as you can before they get to your kids. It's a very dumb game. But anyway, I used sprites for this. <laughs> and, oh no, they're so fast. I'm a game developer, people. Ah, uh, I killed 35 hogs. Um, yes, I'm using Next.js normally. <laughs> I didn't get all 50. But anyway, what did I use for this? Okay, yes, I had I had a game container with uh, different images and stuff, and I think I just did a position on each of these. Oh, I didn't! I had an individual image for each of those? Come on, Pass Cassidy, what were you doing? Eh, it's fine. I did that in about an hour because I was just trying to get the meme out there. Um, okay, well then in that case I don't have an example that I could copy and paste of the sprite sheet, but it shouldn't be theoretically too hard. I haven't done this in a while, but whatever. Okay, so I'm going to take out this use effect then. We're not going to query the API at this point. Perhaps we will at a future date, but because we're taking this approach now, that's how we're doing it. I keep doing command S instead of control S. Darn windows. Okay, programming for the memes. That's exactly why I program, fam. Um, so now that I have the sprite in there, typically in Next, when you want a sprite, um, you can just import it. The same with React too. You, you can actually just list the URL like I did in this footer. So like I have this netle heart, is this little heart thing right here. You can just do the path instead of importing it as some kind of object which is nice. And so what I could do is I could make a Pokemon sprite component, and then I could make it so depending on, depending on the Pokemon that's passed into the sprite component, it'll show which things to show. And then I could also have it so that way if you pass in an array, it'll show Pokemon at a given array. This is about to get a little bit funky. I'm excited about it. It is possible, but it's going to involve a lot of thinking, and thinking is not my favorite activity. Okay, so I'm going to make Pokemon banner.js, and in this I'm going to do export default function Pokemon banner. And in this, I don't even think banner is the right name for it, but I'm just going to stick with that until we come up with something else. Um, inside of here, I'm going to make this into some kind of div. I'll just say it's a div. And for now, I'll just add an image. So just like the footer, I'm just going to copy this because laziness. I'm going to have some kind of image, but instead of netlahart, I am going to have sprites.png. And then the alt will be Pokemon. Now this isn't going to be the way it works, but for now I'm just gonna let it happen and get this on the page. So we've got the Pokemon banner. Then when I go back to my game, what I can do is um, maybe below get type and loser. Do we want it to only show up when the game has started? I think so, I think that'd be good. Um, I'll put in our Pokemon banner right here, and it's going to be big and gross, but it'll work. Um, header, and then let me copy in our Pokemon banner. Okay, wow, look at that! So, here's where we have to think about things. Um, do we want to show all the Pokemon and just have them like grayed out until they've been written down? Or, oh, how do I do the at thing for the components? This is a part of my next Netlify starter. Check it out on my GitHub. I'm pulling it up again because I'm proud of it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do built into Next, but their starter project doesn't have any of them. And so I took out a bunch of the bloat pointing out certain things and I made it a little bit cleaner, where when you set up your JS config.json, it has absolute importing built in. Um, and so I'm gonna 
copy and paste this file right there so you can look at it. But with these with these aliases, what you can do is in the jsconfig.json, you can do at whatever is pointing to whatever. And so it's really useful because let's just say you have design system slash buttons or design system slash whatever, instead of doing a bunch of like dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, Joe, everyone can see you. That's my husband crawling on the ground, everybody. I can, oh my gosh, one second. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a little <laughs> blank screen. Scare no, you. He's, oh, you're not gonna scare me. Uh, sorry about that, people. He's trying to be all sneaky. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Okay, anyway. Oh, I forgot about my overheating camera. Let's turn it back on and see if it works. Wait, turn off the setting. Okay. Does it work? Does it work? No, it doesn't. Oh, no, it does. It does! I'm back! Ah! Oh, no, I'm frozen. Well, you know, you get to see me stroke my beard. That's fine. I'm just gonna go back. That was... That was a very chaotic moment. I'm sorry that he interrupted. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I'm turning my camera off again. So, anyway. <sighs> what were we talking about? Oh yeah, code. You, why did you do that? Okay, sorry people. What were we talking about? Sprites. Do we want to show it so that way, so that way we have all of the sprites showing in gray and then they like turn bright colors when you've typed out the Pokemon or do we want to make it so the sprite only shows up once that Pokemon has been typed? That's, that's the question. Um, yeah, I need a good lesson in streaming skills. Thank you. I need a good lesson in fighting my husband's skills. Um, so, uh, only shows up seems more logical to me. I think so too. Uh, I like having them popped up when typed. Okay, if that's the case, then... Hmm. If we want to have them only show up when they're typed, well, that means we only want to have them show up when they're submitted. So I need to break this up into some kind of grid and then point at the different things in the sprite. Although if we only have them show up when they're submitted, I guess this is, this is all that thinking I was telling you about. Um, yeah, it could be kind of considered a hint if we have everything grayed out because like I might forget Licky Tongue, for example, but then if I see the, the grayed out one, I'd be just like, oh, I know what that is, and keep going. So I guess it depends on how hard we want to make this be. Um, and so, uh, bring back Joe? No. Um, no. Do your job. Okay. So, what we could do, if we want to just have them show up one at a time, then we could just call the API. But if we want to show a series of them, I need to make areas for each part of the sprite. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna pull up, let's see. I'm gonna pull up a software and then see uh, see what the dimensions are for everything. Cause yeah, no matter what, I'll need to know what that is gonna be. Um, let me open my stuff. Excuse me while you watch me navigate again. This is the most chaotic stream, but this is what happens when you don't plan things. You just kind of go with it. Okay. Sprites file. How big are each of these sprites? I don't actually know how to check how big a given selection is at a certain point. Um, oh, so much typing has happened since I looked over. I can make an overlay, yeah, I could create a JSON, and yeah, that's true, I can make dimensions and make my, like, Pokemon object much bigger. 
could get gross, but totally possible. Because how wide is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's 16 units wide. Theoretically, I could still do this programmatically without having to do a thing just because I'll know the index of each of the Pokemon. Um, let's see. I don't account for spelling errors except for Mr. Mine and Farfetch'd, which is a good point because I do have that in the, in the uh, JSON. Um, how am I aliasing imports without a Webpacker next config file? It's built in, baby. Um, if you have a JS config.json, it, it just does it for you. It's built into next. Um, what's Sprite Cow? I'm kind of afraid to look that up. Oh, look at that. Okay. I'm afraid. I swear if it's just gonna moo at me. Okay. What is select sprite? What does this do? Why did you tell me to go to this? Oh heck! That's amazing! Wow! Look at that! This is incredible! Sprite cow! Wow! This is the best thing I've seen in so long. This is a game changer. Thank you so much for sharing Sprite Cow. Hey, Hasler. I don't know how to pronounce your username. I'm just gonna say Hasler. Wow, look at that. You can highlight a box on your Sprite and it gives you the CSS from this image of where it should go. Like, look, look at this bottom thing. It has the background URL and then it has the position of everything. It can do all of that for you. I love you, Sprite Cow. Wow. I don't know why my doorbell is ringing, so I'm just going to do, start singing to yourself. We're back. Hello. Sorry about that. I keep clicking the wrong thing and you get to see my little thinking face. Okay. So what happens if you select multiple sprites in Sprite Count? I don't know. Oh, look at that. It just does a chunk of them. Hmm. Which I don't want to do. Okay. So this might be a little bit manual, but I can manually get each of the each of the individual sprites and the CSS for all of those. A lot of people say hi, Joe. Now get back to work. <laughs> okay. Um, so now Joe is just going to be this ghost that people ask about on occasion. I love this. Okay. So I can select different sprites. I can just click on them individually and get the CSS for each of them. That is such a great tool. If only I could get a series of sprites uh, at once, that could be really useful. Um, yeah, I don't need to drag and drop, but I, it'd be nice to be able to do this. So I, you know what? I could do this a little bit manually at first. What I could do is in our Pokemon banner, I could use style JSX again, and then inside each of those, I could make it so, um, let's see, I could turn this into a div, a, a, or just a regular div without the image, and then have the image, or, or the div be x amount, and then have a sprite on the inside of the div, and then style that based on the class that I pass in. And then the class that I pass in will be the name of each of the Pokemon that I click on. That could work. Yeah, Pokemon name style type of thing. Hello friends, thanks for joining. Um, man, that is a very cool tool. I am into it. Okay. And then I could make it where if an array is passed in here, I'm just going to say pokey r. If an array is passed in here, what happens is I will 
do like some kind of map. And so I can map a pokey r dot map. And then for each thing inside of pokey r, I'm just gonna say for each Pokemon inside of pokey r, we can return and then it'll be a div and it'll have the class and it'll be like a class name of Sprite and Pokemon. Like that. And then I can have classes based on that. What do you think? I think that makes sense. So instead of having the one giant image, we just have, we have various divs that are plopped on the screen because then it can be out of order too. That should work because it, it'll just be based on the order of when the user uh, clicked on stuff. Hmm. Also, if you don't see any video de on demand on Twitch, you should. I've, I've, I've done other ones, um, although it probably expires after 14 days or something. If you want uh, videos on demand, I'm exported to YouTube. I don't actually know what the URL is for my YouTube, which I should. You recognize me from Twitter dev means? You would be correct. That's me, buckaroo. Um, my channel, is that, is this it? Oh, hey, that's me. Cool. So this is, this is it. I don't think I have enough subscribers to have, uh, what if I paste here? Oh, yeah, I don't think I have enough subscribers to get a vanity URL. Um, you'd put the position in a hash map and put the cords inside the tag, or the coordinates inside the tag. Yeah. But then I can't use Sprite Cow, which is the whole point. But let me think. They are they are all in the same position. Like if I were to pull this up in my editor thing here, like here, let me get my ruler. Show rulers. If I were to make like a vertical line right here, um, they're all generally in the same squares. They might need to be positioned within the same squares, but they're all in the same squares. And those squares are of a certain height. I think that's generally right. And how big would this be? Again, I don't actually know how to use this software, so let's find out if I can figure out what the dimensions would be. Um, 64 by 64. Okay, so each of these is a 64 by 64. So, like what you said, I could do that. I could just show parts of the image in this in the 64 by 64. That would work. That would work just fine. Um, and then I'd have, and instead of doing one big Pokemon banner, I could have individual Pokemon things. Yeah, actually. Because then I could just really use, I instead of having Pokemon Banner, Pokemon Banner could be the container component for a bunch of other things. Let me comment this out for a second. If I were to do something like some Pokemon component, I'm just going to put one in here. Um, function Pokemon Sprite. And then return in here. Then I would have the image styled at those coordinates. That could that could work. Um, yeah, because then it could be it could be this sprites image thing here. I don't want to call that logo. That's fine. because then I could do this and then style it based on the coordinates that I get in the Pokemon sprite. And so I could do chords or something. Um, and I could even just do some logic. I could get the Pokemon number. And so the Pokemon's number could be, um, is that a Pokemon component or a Pokeponent? I like Pokeponent, that's cute. Poke nope, I'm not going to type it. Getting carried away. Okay. <laughs> All of this stuff. Um, no, her jokes are great. Uh, so with this, what, what keyboard am I currently using? I'm using a Real Force TKL 
with uh, toe brace switches because they're nice and quiet for when I'm live coding. Um, so I could do the whole style JSX thing. What's the syntax for that again? Sorry. Oh, JSX is in the tag. Okay. Style JSX and then do the whole thingy in here and then do some CSS and JS magic where I could style it based on the current number. And so because we know that there's 16 across, I could do like a Pokemon number mod 16 or whatever um, to get the row that it's in and, and figure out where it is on the sheet and then do the background URL of this sprite to be that thing. Uh, these braces, this is a, um, the oh, these curly braces right here, this is just a destructuring thing. And so this is doing the same thing as if I were to um, say props right here and then let this equal props. That's that's all that is. It's it's pulling the object out of props without declaring something extra. If I do that right here, then I can just then I can just do that. It's kind of nice. Um, this won't work for responsiveness, right? It could work for responsiveness. I mean, th this is this is just for uh, getting individual the individual thing. It it shouldn't matter. Um, because I could do one of these things too. So it's 64 pixels by 64 pixels. And so um, we know the sprite size has to be the 64 by 64, but then the background position changes depending on where it is. And so width is 64 pixels, height is 64 pixels. And then um, the background URL varies depending on the Pokemon number and what we pass in. Yeah, that could work. Um, so I'm going to change this. I think I'm going to change this into a div that has a background image. And then this div is going to have a class name of sprite. And then the sprite is going to be 64 by 64. And you know what? I'll give it a background of red just for debugging for now. We'll clean that up in a bit. Um, the empty JSX tags are fragments. Yeah, so quick history lesson. Way back in the day, in early React, uh, React to this day can only return one element. Um, and so before fragments existed in React 15, you would have to just wrap everything in a div and you would end up having tons of empty divs that kind of messed up design systems over time. And so then the React team came up with fragments and a fragment is just a it returns nothing in HTML, but it allows React to just return one object. And um, then people were like, fragment is a long word to type. And so they shortened it to this. And so that's a fragment. All it is is a thing that holds things. And that is it. <laughs> um, why not do this? Yeah, that's, that is what I'm doing. Yeah, anyway. Oh, it thinks that you're typing a URL in the chat. That's kind of funny. Yeah, anyway. So we have our sprite, we have these things. In this Pokemon sprite, it will take in a Pokemon number. The Pokemon number will be a class. Actually, it doesn't have to be a class. The Pokemon number, we just have to parse it. And so parsing that Pokemon number, we would get, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Is Pidgeotto Pokemon number 17? It should be, but I want to check before actually checking on things. What is your number? It's 16. No, it's 17. Okay, great. Cool. So it, it, I just want to make sure that I didn't miss something there. So if it is that number, then we can do like the whole mod 16 thing to find out what row it's in and then plus whatever. Um, so the background URL Actually, yeah, so it won't actually be red. We'll do the background URL is sprites.png. Is sprites.png, like that. And then the position is what we'll have to put in over here. And so I'll do no repeat. And then the position, kind of like what we did in here, 
but it's going to be because everything is 64 pixels by 64 pixels then we scoot things around don't i know pokemon numbers by heart i don't i don't okay so to get these numbers we have to do like the whole multiplying by 16 and all that jazz so first of all we have to do the mod so uh we could say let row is equal to pokemon number mod 16 because if i were to do that in the console right here if, if let's just say i wanted pidgeotto 17 mod 16 is one and if i wanted to get pokemon 151 151 mod 16 is seven and we need one two three four five six seven. oh wait that's not right what am i thinking math is weird okay so we know that that is one well mod oh mod gives the column plus one gotcha thank you you're right yeah because Pidgeotto is not in the first row, it is in the second. And so it would be that plus one. And so, um, 17 mod 16 plus one, like that, that gives us row two. And then if I were to do 151 mod 16, that's row eight. Although that's still not right because 151 should be in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Yeah, mu is in row 10. Divide max number of rows to get the row. You know, this is the kind of thing where if I were doing it not live, I'd be just like, ah, oh, this is easy. This is simple. But my brain is tired and I'm live right now. Math.floor. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. Good point. Um, yeah. 151 plus 1. That's, that's a good point. Mod 16. No, that still gets the thing. Time check. Thank you for checking. I have a meeting in 15 minutes. Easy. Um, oh yeah, uh, for those who are checking or pointing that out, I do have a new course on Scrimba. If you want to go on Scrimba, they have a career path for a front-end developer, and I am teaching two of the courses on here. Um, one of them is one of them is a React reusable react course and then the other one is react interview questions and so check it out if you want thank you for that word from our sponsor but yes i have two courses on the front end career path if you don't want to do the subscription for the whole career path thing um i know one of my courses is going to be released as a standalone course in like a week or two anyway okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we want to get Pokemon 150, Mewtwo, in row 10. And so, Mod is going to give you the column. Good point. Wait, no, that's not right. Well, though, that is right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, we need to do 17 equals 67 row column. My brain is tough. So the mod gets the column. You want that CSS course. I know you want that CSS course. I'll make it someday. I'll do it. I, can't. I was going to try to do a Seinfeld impersonation and it was terrible. Okay. Floor division gives the row. Mod is the remainder. So it's the column. You're right. You're right. Okay. So we would get... Uh, we have all of these rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I were to do... 150 divided by 17, for example, we get that. And that is not what I'm talking about. Math.floor 151 over 16. Joe, what are you doing? That's how you're trying to hide yourself? Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> I told him he should go upstairs while I stream. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> he 
You didn't see anything. Oh my gosh. I promise I'm better at math than this. But again, yeah, I do need to get so I I do need to get some kind of green screen thing, but our office isn't that big and it's also the only room on this floor, so it's just our own little cave. And so, we get the Pokémon number divided by the row. So 17 divided by 16 math.floor gives us the row. Plus one because of the thing. So math dot floor of 17 divided by 16 plus one. There you go. That's how you get freaking Pidg Pidgeotto's thing. Ah, okay. So we get the freaking, but yeah, math, math is, math is very difficult on video. Okay. So column is a Pokemon number mod 16. Let row is equal to math dot floor of Pokemon number divided by sixteen plus one. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. If it doesn't, that sucks. Okay. Now that we have done that, um, I am going to then translate this into the pixels. And so, for example, in the first column, like, which again, 17 mod, oh, we have to subtract one then, because it's, it's zero. Yeah. So it's going to be the column of that minus one, because it has to start at zero. And then we need to multiply that by, you, we need to do it like by 64. Because each thing is 64 thingies. You don't think I should add the one, the row index starts at zero. Good point. Thank you. Okay. So, this whole thing, why is it showing negative 14 and negative 15 pixels? Oh, because it's going down and to the side. Okay. So, we need to make it so that way we turn this into the dimensions where it's 64 by 64. I took out the plus one. I apologize for that. You're right. Okay. So if we were to, for example, get Pidgeotto, we would want it to start at negative 64, or, or it would be at zero and negative 64. And so because Pokemon, uh, and so we could just multiply this by 64 for each of these. Times negative 64. Let's see. Did I do the ib? I don't know what the ib is. The negative one is because we're shifting things into a uh, zero index, correct? Can you multiply by negative 64 like that? I think you can. We'll find out. Um, yeah. So now that we've done that, we could do, um, we need row and we need call pixels. But I still need to do row, don't worry, we'll do row. International baccalaureate, no, I did not do ib. I did AP, but I did not do ib. Okay, and so with the row, we know that math.floor Pokemon number blah, blah blah blah. That's going to be row two. And so row two, we don't need to oh, we're not doing the plus one. So we're doing that. So when it's row one, that's gonna be times just sixty-four again. Is that all we need to do? I think that's all we need to do. Let's find out, shall we? I'm going to take out all of this. I'm going to do a Pokemon sprite. And then the Pokemon number. Pokemon number that I'm passing in. You know what? I'm gonna say Pokenum. Num that I'm passing in is 17. And if we get Pidgeotto, that is the most miracle thing that's ever happened. <sighs> okay, well, hated that. Oh, that's because I changed the variable name. That's my bad. Hey, that's not Pidgeotto, but it's something. <laughs> Okay, cool.
the negative one on the column should be the before the mod. This should be before them. Oh, so it should be Pokemon, like like in here. I don't think that's right. You know what? I'm going to just multiply it by 64 and then add a negative in front of it here. Okay, so it is getting this mixed up. That is probably my fault. Also, I want row before column, but that doesn't matter. Aha! Okay, what's another Pokemon's number? Um, let's do Mew at 151. Let's see if that one works. Oh heck! Look at that! What's another What's another Pokemon's number? I'm just gonna do five because that's Squirtle, I think. No, that's that's uh, Charmeleon. Okay, we did things! Hurrah! Yeah! Okay, so what we can do now is then when we get this Poke Array, we can do a map of all of the Pokemon sprites, get the Pokemon numbers for each of the Pokemon, and then show all of the different Pokemon that the users have typed. That was a lot of thinking for something that was pretty dang small, but I'm glad that we did it together because I have six minutes until my next meeting. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pause it there and let's just let's just gab for a little bit because this was fun. Um, I'm going to actually commit this to GitHub really quick. Status git, and then I'll I'll commit it and paste the link inside of the chat so that way you can bask in success with me because this was very exciting. Git add components. Git add public. I probably should have kept my screen up so you could see what I'm doing, but that's fine. Get status, get commit minus M. You can see what I'm doing if you want. Look at me. Um, get commit minus M. Uh, what's the day? July 9 stream, get sprites working. Cool. Joe, I'm still streaming. I see you being all sneaky there. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Get push origin, or I don't need to origin, it's just going to the typing game. Okay, cool. And now, by Sprite Cow, I'm gonna use Sprite Cow someday, that thing is great. Typing game. I'm posting it in here. And then, now that I've posted it in there, what you'll notice in our little thing is it says building, and that is because it's building, and so it's going to be deployed live to Netlify, and so you can see if it works or not on your end. Um, but yeah, that's that's how that one works, but let's chat again. Anyway, thanks, thanks all for coming. It's been a fun time, chaotic and stuff. Um, oh no, don't feel stupid about JavaScript, you are smart. Um, a lot of this stuff, as you can see, it's just a lot of thinking, banging your head, and then suddenly it works magically. And that's how all coding works. What's that keyboard in the back? Which one? That one or that one? Or my calculator? Which hands am I using? That. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of keyboards here. We talked a lot about them earlier. And I'll probably talk about them again. Uh, the one to my right. This is a Rama keyboard. Um, it's a Rama M60A with DSS Tecla and telios yes this was this was like a very weird struggle with math i'd normally again it's one of those things where your brain just kind of turns off when you're talking live to people and out loud i that that was that's gonna haunt me with how long that took me to figure out but you were all great um it's been very fun having you all i appreciate you joining in i'm gonna try to be pretty consistent about streaming um every week every other week Probably every week. We'll see how this goes. Um, again, last week I had the React core team on, and it was pretty fun to have them all uh, talking about things. If there are other dev teams that you'd like to come on the stream, I'm happy to put out fingers and, and ask what, what other dev teams uh, might be interested in joining us. But again, we coded things today. It was fun.
I will probably, I can't decide if I should stream more on Thursdays or Fridays. Do any of you have preferences? I've got two minutes to talk to you. <laughs> the Netlify dev team would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, can I do a code class with viewers? That's what this is. Didn't you learn everything? <laughs> but yeah, I can teach more things. Um, and again, I, I taught on uh, Scrimba. Uh, I'm going to put the URL again, scrimba.com. Um, I just released two courses on it this past week, and so check it out if you are interested. And uh, my courses, if you don't want to do the whole path, which the whole path is really cool, there's some there's some awesome teachers on there. Um, you can go ahead and, and uh, wait for my course to be released as a standalone. Um, Thursdays are best because so often out on Fridays. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that a lot of people don't really want to chill on Fridays, but also. It's kind of like, end of day, I'm doing nothing else. Oh, but also people have more lives than I do. Anyway, um, it was fun. Thanks so much for joining. Um, I will probably stream on Thursdays then. I, if, I'll, I'll tweet about it. Uh, so, at Casadu for pretty much everything for GitHub, CodePen, Twitter, and stuff. And Patreon, too. If you'd like to uh, join patreon.com slash Casadu, uh, it is a very, very active Discord channel, and everyone is fun and trolls me, and it's a good time. Um, but thank you all so much for coming. I have a minute left until my meeting, so I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Bye.